Okay, so welcome everyone to Pinterest in the Classroom. Again, I'm Celia Loomis. I'm the Digital Media Coordinator here at ACTE. And just to give you a quick introduction to some of our panelists. The first, one of our first panelists is Leslie Walkins. She is actually a former ACTE VP for Family and Consumer Sciences and is currently the past chair for the FCCLA Board of Directors and also one of the FCCLA representatives on the National Coalition of Family and Consumer Sciences Education. Um, Leslie was also selected as ACTE's Teacher of the Year in 2007. Our second panelist is Joni Ojard, and she has been an FACS teacher at Spanish Ford High School in Spanish at Spanish Fort High School in Spanish Fort, Alabama, for the past 15 years. She has served as the president and board member of Alabama's ACTE FACS division and has been a national board member as well. She, and she has also been a part of numerous state committees in Alabama. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to um, let's get the presentation started. And thank you all again. And this recording will be available on um, ACT Live, and that's www.acteonline slash live. Without further ado, here you go, and Leslie. Thanks, Celia, and welcome, everyone. Um, we look forward to uh, spending uh, some quality minutes this uh, afternoon and more about Pinterest and its class and consumer sciences. So without further ado, I'm just going to share just a beginning overview. We're not sure how many of you are experts, um, Pinterest users, uh, but in starting uh, to talk about this, it, you could, we could spend all day. There's so many exciting resources that are available to you with Pinterest. And, and finding and locating the Facts of Life um, uh, site or Pinterest location for ACTE, you simply go to the ACTE website, and on that front screen, if you scroll down, there's a little button that has a Pinterest icon. You click on that, and there are all the boards. I think there, well, there are many boards, uh, Pinterest boards located there for CTE, uh, and specific to different divisions uh, and uh, just different activities within ACTE itself. And the Facts of Life is the one that has been developed more extensively for the family and consumer science division. So as you, as you cruise through here, we're trying to add and locate um, many different classroom resources that you could use. Um, if you're new to Pinterest, of course, you need to have your, you need to develop your own Pinterest account, set it up, and organize your boards as such. Um, as we move through this, there, these are some of the many uses uh, for classroom um, the classroom resource for Pinterest. Uh, there are many lesson plans for you available, um, things like movie clips that are easily located uh, at your fingertips so that you can find those and drop those into your lessons. Technology ideas, everything from smart boards to iPads to you know, many different things, projectors, all kinds of ideas that you can drop in for resources to practice later, or ideas with um, different technology tools that you have be able to use and uh, utilize in the classroom. Ways to organize your family and school sites, classrooms, lessons, uh, PowerPoints are available, many study guides, and lots of SBCLA ideas. So there's very there's so many things that are available for inspiration and for classroom use. For, as far as dues are for Pinterest, you want to always make sure you're collaborating and connecting, you're sharing and inspiring your ideas, um, and that you set up specific boards perhaps related to your classroom, um, make them as, as probably as specific as you can so that as you try and locate things or try and pin things to those boards, when you're preparing for the classroom that you go directly to those sites for that particular uh, classroom preparation so that it's a, it's a timetable for you. You want to pin slowly. If you've ever followed people on Pinterest, um, you, you notice that sometimes people get a little bit overwhelming. Uh, I have a friend, and one of the boards I don't follow is the one regarding her grandchildren because she pins everything. You know, she may get on a um, a kick with one different item, and they have 40 Pinterest or pins that we might have to wade through. So I've learned how to carefully pin slowly so I don't overwhelm others, and then also 
so that I follow specific boards so they don't overwhelm me. You want to also interact as much as you can with Pinterest, perhaps by having an app on your phone so that you can, um, when you have a moment, that you can find things and locate things that are interesting to you and be able to find them later. You always want to check your sources, and I'll talk about this a little bit later. You want to make sure that those sites are still available even in preparing for this um, session this afternoon. One of the things I found is that one of the links on one of the websites for the movie clips was no longer available. So I simply deleted that off my board so that I wasn't frustrated in the future and other people that might go to my site would not be frustrated as well. You want to be interesting and visual. Curate the best. You definitely don't want to be a part of the parody of the Pinterest flops that are, that are floating around. Uh, of this was found on Pinterest, but it didn't work, and, and what it looks like when they did it. So you want to make sure that you are curating the best. Your board covers are inspiring to others, so that they um, that they will go to those to your sites or will look through whatever you can. That your descriptions are are uh, actually descriptions from you and not someone else you can directly from. And that you tell stories and organize thoughtfully as well. Uh, and again, with repinning, make sure you check that source before pinning and that, you know, the source is still there and has not been moved. We know that blogs disappear, links disappear. Some people don't pin correctly, so it's really easier if, or better if you'll go directly to the source and pin directly from the source rather than from another pinner oftentimes. Make sure that your content is appropriate. It's nothing worse than thinking you have a great culinary video for classroom use and then finding it that it's really not appropriate. So you want to make sure that you, if you're linking a video or putting a video on Pinterest for your classroom use, that you do watch it and make sure, as you would a movie or anything else that you might use for classroom use, that it is appropriate. Again, the thought book uh, descriptions and organizing on the appropriate board so you can find it again are very important. This is an example of a pen that is on the Facts of Life Pinterest uh, account uh, with ACTE. And if you'll notice across the top, it does have for how you can pin. You want to make sure, or you can like it. You can visit the site to find out if it's there. I always recommend checking and clicking that before you pin it. You can send it in a form of email. I don't share on Facebook. Oftentimes people do. And there's always and always times when you click on something a little faster than you want. Make sure you're familiar with that edit button so that you can go in and edit the title or the exact um, a description of what that pen is describing so that you can find it later. Or perhaps you pin it onto the wrong board and it's easy to um, get rid of that and switch that out. Another feature that I love of Pinterest is where it says, uh, you've already pinned this before. So that way you don't have duplicates on your Pinterest account. Even though some people might like to put it on more than one board, say you're using something in life skills and get in a food uh, management course, that you might duplicate it two places. And that oftentimes happens as well. Um, Pinterest is so wonderful for inspiration, whether it's just simply a, 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 not a blog or a, a website that you're being directed to. Perhaps it's just Flickr or a picture. Those are still very valid as well. And those can work uh, really well for you. I think you know, just simply a, just a picture of inspiration is helpful. And then additions for lessons, whether it's um, a poster uh, infographic or uh, something to drop into those lessons, those are very beneficial for me as well. Here again is another video sign, integrating FCCI ideas for community service. There's a wealth of resources available for you to use. Uh, again, watching those things in advance and seeing if it's applicable to your group or something that might pertain to your family and students like classroom uh, and integrating SCCLI uh, for your students would be a very valuable tool. And again, this there's this pin on the ACTE uh, Facts of Life uh, Pinterest board that talks about Joy and Julie. And it, it, it actually talks about a classroom going, um, going um, for using Joy and Julia and making their own blog. And so you may find that classrooms are using blogs and how can you use that resource in the classroom? Um, this particular uh, pen talks about the anatomy of Pinterest. And I thought it was interesting. I have found statistics saying there's anywhere from 79 to 80% of Pinterest users that are female. 
Um, the age here is 24 to 34 is the average. Um, but I thought also that it is interesting to find out that teachers are primarily the ones that use them. And if you'll notice from the blue up, those are with bachelor's degrees in us that often are the census users. So there's more information there that you can find on the website. And last but not least on my portion to begin with, is just be careful of sites that require you to buy. Um, there might be, an, uh, might be an opportunity where you just set up a board to collect sources for future pur purchases. Maybe if you have an opportunity for a grant or funds become available, then you have them readily accessible. But just to separate them out is helpful for me because it eliminates frustration from going to a site where it has no content whatsoever to use. Um, the TeachersPayTeachers.com is a great example. They have wonderful resources, but you do have to buy them. Okay. So at this time, I think uh, I'm going to turn over uh, back to Celia so she can connect Joni for her next portion of the program today. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hi there. If you want to click on um, the tab right next to that, you can get to your presentation, Joni. Okay. There we are. Thank you. Um, my name is Joni Ojard, and I was um, very glad when Leslie contacted me about helping out with this presentation today because I'm a huge fan of Pinterest and using it in the classroom. I have been using Pinterest for several years. And I started strictly as a personal tool. My daughter had introduced it to me, and she and her friends were using it for recipes and shopping and fashion and home design and those kinds of things. And so that's where I began. But as soon as I joined and started looking at some other boards, I saw what a wonderful resource it is for us to be able to use in the classroom. And it is now one of the tools that I use most heavily for my lessons. It helps me to collate, collect these things in one place, makes for seamless presentation within the classroom. And it helps me both in planning and in, in presentations as I'm speaking to my students. And um, I like that it's available on multiple devices. So I can use it on a laptop. I can use it on a, a classroom computer. I can use it on an iPad or on, on a phone. And even when I'm away from my classroom, I'm able to access that information. I've also found that it has increased student engagement in my classroom and discussion in that classroom. Because in some ways, it means that we're speaking more of the language that our students are speaking to. And um, so I'm, I'm very much a, a fan of using Pinterest in the classroom. I teach primarily food and nutrition classes. And so I'm going to be concentrating today on sharing with you some of the resources that I have that are related to those foods-related classes, although I have other boards that are facts related in the other content areas also. I, um, next year I'm going to be leading a new academy at our school that's in food, wellness, and dietetics. And that's going to include classes in food nutrition, dietetics, and chemistry of food. So I've been using it this year to collect some of those resources that I want to use for some new classes that we're bringing on board too in the following school year. What's great about Pinterest is the obvious one about collecting recipes. And I use it to collect a lot of recipes for food labs. It's very visual. There are millions of recipes that are available. It's good for our students to be able to access. The recipes might link to a website. Oftentimes, I have them linked to step-by-step -step directions and tutorials with pictures, which help students to be able to see the process of putting together a recipe and also online videos on preparation techniques. You can organize your recipes by subject matter, by lab use. Um, it makes it easy to share those resources with other fact teachers. It makes it easy to, um, to also be able to share those resources with students if they have that capability. Our county has adopted a uh, technology initiative. And so we have um, MacBook computers for every one of our students. And we have, in, for the most part, we don't have textbooks any longer. We have old collections of textbooks, but they won't be purchasing any more of those. And so we're actively looking for digital resources to be able to use in the classroom. And Pinterest has been a great help for us to be able to use that as we can access online video resources and step-by-step -step tutorials. The students are really inspired by the pictures and the ideas that they uh, can access and have available to them, too. 
So at this point, I'd like to switch over to Sam Salia to take a look quickly at my Food for Thought board. Thank you. So this is an example of one of the boards that I use for recipes. And, um, and as you look at this, you can see that there are wonderful infographics and information for students, also links to some of the specific recipes and tutorials. I oftentimes will have something from a page just pulled up and have it on the smart board in the front of the classroom as a discussion starter at the beginning of the class. And it really engages the students and, and helps us to be able to begin um, that day's uh, lessons. Um, we also use them for inspiration. I often, we have challenge labs in my classroom, things like cupcake wars or iron chef competitions, planning for special events. We did prom catering and made desserts for the prom, holiday meals and activities. And it gives us a tool to be able to search and look for recipes and labs that would be appropriate for those. We have been able to go more paperless this way also because we can use the laptops or iPads to be able to have the recipe directions available during lab and not have to have paper copies of those available. And so um, we like to have that availability. The other thing that's wonderful about using the recipe collections that are on here is that they're available for you wherever you are. When you're traveling, when you're on vacation, when you're visiting family, you want to pull up a, a recipe that you have used before, you can have that availability there for you. So at this point, we'll go back to uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. You're all set. Here we are. Okay. Um, so another board that I use quite heavily is one that I call culinary. And on that, I have a lot of tips and techniques um, for the classroom. You know, all those how-to videos that we've collected over the years, I hardly use them anymore at all. They've been a huge expense to my yearly budget, and oftentimes students just didn't connect with them because they were outdated. As hair and fashions change, uh, it tends to have our students clean out sometimes for that information, even though it's very valid. And so I find that being able to pull up some of the video clips that are on Pinterest um, engages the students more readily in the classroom. And uh, there are many, many culinary video clips that are available here, and you can have them all in one source. So again, it's that seamless presentation. You can click back and forth between information that you want to share on specific subject areas without having to open other browsers or to store it on a jump drive or some other device to have it accessible in the classroom. Other uses in the culinary uh, field will include accessing other faculty teachers' boards to visit their website, their PowerPoint, their presentations. And there are multiple charts that include equivalents and substitutions. I often use infographics, and there are hundreds of those available as lesson starters, again, to get students thinking and tuned into specific subject areas. You can access YouTube video clips um, by collecting them on your Pinterest board. You can access Food Network and Cooking Channel segments and even episodes that are no longer in production. For example, some of Elton Brown's, which are wonderful for food science, uh, you can collect and have them here because they're archived and, and they still uh, have those links that are available and able to be able to use. Um, we used them recently this last year when we were doing a pasta making lab, and uh, that was a new concept for the students in my class. They had not made pasta from scratch before, so we were able to find some links that gave us recipes, gave us tips, and also gave us this tutorial so that the students felt that they were, um, they were capable of being able to do this uh, on their own. And Celia, if you can go ahead and click over to the culinary board that I have, please. Thank you, great. OK, so here's some examples of things that I have that are on the culinary board. And you can see that there are uh, the different cutting techniques that are demonstrated. There's a measuring lesson here. Um, there are equivalent charts that are quite in depth. We have information on cuts of meat that are available, the uh, common cooking mistakes that are made, things about herbs and spices, learning basic knife skills, scavenger hunts. Um, you can find links to different games that you can use within the classroom and to be able to build your own games also. 
So those are some of the uh, ways that I like to be able to use it in that area. We'll go back to the PowerPoint presentation now, Julia. Right. Okay. So here's a section that I have that's on nutrition. That's another board that I keep. And it has many web quests that are on it. It has a lot of infographics. It has up-to-date and current resources. And I also collect information on project-based learning lessons. Textbooks may be out of date in your classroom or not available at all for you to be able to use. And so you can collate your nutrition resources using, uh, using Pinterest. I use the um, Pinterest app on my computer and then connect it to my smart board so that I can be in the front of the room or students can be in the front of the room and we can click and move around and be able to access that information and it works really well that way. Another area that I have a board for that's related to the food content is in food safety and sanitation. And in this area, I've collected information on USDA and FDA resources on ServSafe principal posters, training videos, and I have a board that's on food safety with a lot of that information. If Pinterest is an excellent source for current statistics and resources on food safety, and it helps my students prepare for taking their serve safe exams, and makes them more aware of food safety issues in the home and in the field or in work. For example, product recalls and food safety that is in the news. So those are some other areas that I use within food safety. I also have some other food-related boards, and I've listed them on this slide. I have a general category called Facts of Life. I have recipes. I have food science resources. I have a, a page that is on international foods, and it has some video links and PowerPoints. Um, I keep examples of labs that we've done with Cupcake Wars. I have many holiday boards that relate to ideas used in the classroom for specific holidays, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Easter. The FDCLA information that I've collected is wonderful because uh, there's information and links there on recruitment and fundraising ideas and star events and videos to be able to access. I also have a classroom board, and that has general information on using technology in the classroom, common core, organization, tools, um, and that kind of information. Even if you're the only faculty at your school or the only one that's teaching a content area, you can connect with other teachers to share resources. You don't feel alone because you have this wide expanse of resources available to you. The possibilities are unlimited for collecting content to use in the classroom. You can access teacher websites and blogs and web quests, facts history, apps, icebreakers, journal topics, and writing prompts. Now, some of the issues that you might need to address when I found within my classroom are the accessibility of students being able to use Pinterest. In our school system, since we have that one-to-one -one initiative, we have two servers. One is for the teacher's side of the network. One is for the student's side of the network. Teachers can access Pinterest um, at special request. I had to ask to have that added to it. Currently, our students can't access Pinterest on their side of the network. But they do have their phones, and they can collect. They can use their computers while they're at home, and they can collect information. Or they can access my boards to look at them when they're away from school. So we still found some ways to be able to use that and uh, have that availability to them. I also have several boards that are facts-related uh, subject boards that aren't connected to foods area, but I have some things on, on sewing and fabrics and parenting and fashion and facts, consumer skills and craft ideas. And so I do collate and collect information in those areas also. So what do I love most about Pinterest? Well, it's really hard to pin down and say just one thing that's a part of it. It's the ease of organizing the resources. I love the collaborative feature of this because you can add someone else as a pinner to your board. So you can collaborate with a teacher in another city, in another state, and you can both combine resources onto a common board of something that you might be teaching together. I like to be able to connect it to my smart board in the classroom, and it gives me inspiration for lesson plans. It's really inspired and changed some of the ways that I teach things by having that more current information. It saves me a lot of time in the classroom because all my links are located within the same area, and it's available then for student and teacher use. My students can create and, and include part of that in their technology portfolios. You can search for information easily by you can follow colleagues to see their pins. 
it's very visually appealing for students also. And, um, and I think, that, again, that it helps us to be able to speak the student's language. And as Leslie had mentioned earlier, you can have secret boards also. So if you were allowing students to look and, and follow you on Pinterest, they um, would not have access to the things that you might have, the secret boards that you're keeping some other information. For example, I have one right now that's a secret board. I'm planning a bridesmaid's luncheon for my niece who's getting married in June. And I don't want her to see the information that I'm putting on that, on that board. And so that one is for my eyes only, but as I have information that I'm collecting and some ideas that I want to use for invitations and menus and favors and those kinds of things for that event, I just have that so it's for my eyes only to be able to, to use. I think it's a great way for us to be able to grow our fast community by using Pinterest. And so I've got my link here to be able to follow me on Pinterest if you are interested in taking a look at some of the things that I have there. Um, and I would be love to be able to follow you also and say we'll see the things that you are collecting. I'm going to turn this back over to Leslie at this time. Thank you, Joni. That was amazing. I think we could just spend hours on sharing boards and uh, the many classroom uses. So oh, that was amazing. Um, the last thing that I'm going to just share with you briefly before we do question and answer is um, I actually have um, uh, another presenter that was supposed to share. Uh, and he went ahead and sent a PDF um, for me. Um, he's actually VP Creative brands and campaigns for Red Interactive Agency in Santa Monica, California. And, um, you know, as I shared earlier, the profile of Pinterest users are really about 80% female. But um, I'm finding in the professional realm, there are lots more uh, men and women using uh, the Pinterest tool. And I, and I think this is, uh, you know, we always share about consumerism and careers. And uh, even marketing and advertising to some someone in our life school courses. And so I felt like this was uh, the information that he shared was really relevant. Um, you know, he, his take on uh, using Pinterest as a, a content discovery tool was simply to unfollow everyone that follows you by default when you set up your account if you don't want to follow them back necessarily, just to fine fine tune. I think he has to do that because he has 14,000 followers. <laughs> I'm not up to that many yet, nor may many of you be that way. But um, basically, uh, you know, the profile and pin sign, uh, you know, of, of knowing how to follow people and see the number that follow you is kind of inspirational in itself. Um, how to find pin, uh, friends and follow their boards, as Joni uh, suggested, is a real, uh, real benefit as well for Pinterest. Um, the other thing that um, he suggested to do on, on finding people to follow is not just simply limit it to family and consumer science and instruction, although that's what we want to do, but I think reaching out beyond. Some of you may attend your own events, your own classroom instruction. Sometimes that, that may mean that you also have a blog or a website on your um, school location. Uh, and if you do, that's a great, great place to link. Um, just making sure that you, you know where to follow people outside of the classroom too is beneficial. I follow William Sonoma a lot just because it's one of my favorite places to follow. And then also different companies or um, businesses that, that, are, that provide some real great um, instructional tools for real world applications for my students. Um, the next thing too that, that he suggested, um, and I wanted just to point this out, was to make sure that you evaluate and follow the pin, your pinners so that um, this, this particular um, slide that he included um, talked about, you know, it gives the name of the pinner under that, and you can click their name and, and check and see if there are other ideas that you want to follow on their, on their board as well. Um, the next slide he talked about was finding some, uh, you know, similar pinners and pins. There's a section on Pinterest where, uh, you know, you'll find similar boards, and I've learned to explore that and found new people and friends that way. And often, many of them are family and senior science educators. Um, finding your favorite people and brand um, are important. Um, and so then also, um, 
again, he said, make sure that uh, you get a habit of using Pinterest every day as a bar bookmarking site um, so that you can store inspiring things. And I, I didn't know this under A on, the, on that sheet on this slide. He, he said that, um, that Pinterest has done a phenomenal job of making a mobile app for iPhone and Android that's built in. And if you click and hold on any image, you can easily pin things from the quick menu that appears when you hold the finger down. So you all might try that. I haven't, I haven't done that before. Uh, and then a mobile app is just a great thing to have so that you, while you're out, when you're uh, waiting on in, in certain areas, even waiting for food at a, a restaurant or whatever, you've got it. While you have just a few moments to capture your thoughts uh, for inspiration, that you can use them for that. Um, so you so that it'll make your life easier when the press is on. And then again, he also shares. Make sure that you ch uh, check and verify the content link again for the URL. Make sure that you um, write thoughtful descriptions, as we said earlier. Don't just pin repin from others blindly, but take a look at that pin description and make sure it's as applicable words that are accurate, accurately and comprehensively described in the post. And um, make sure that um, that you do check and make sure that the boards that you're pinning are staying current so that you're not frustrated when you try and use them again. And then, as Joni said, and I said earlier, do use the private boards for non-public research and pinning. And um, that's very beneficial as well. And I think I'm going to turn this uh, point of the presentation now over to Celia and for any kind of question and answer that we might want to do on this. Hi there. Um, yeah, so at this point, we'll be taking um, any questions that you guys have. Actually, I'll start with a question. So this actually goes out to both um, Leslie and Joni. Have you guys, uh, have you established any type of Pinterest boards specifically for the group that you're working with, with, are students allowed to, I know you talked about this briefly, are students allowed to pin things to a certain board? I have not shared um, the, uh, the ability to pin, for them to pin to my board. No, I haven't done that. I think that's what you're asking. Um, but they're welcome. Uh, I have shared my Pinterest account with my students so that they can see it and go to it for research. So I have done that. Yes, I, I agree with Leslie. I haven't at this point added students as collaborators on my Pinterest boards, um, but they do have the availability of being able to, to look at them to be able to see information that I have posted. Perfect. Thank you. I, think that I, don't, want to, I don't think I want to be a watchdog to see who pins something to my board. Um, that I might or may not want to. I want to have more control over that board. One other thought that I wanted to add about the value of Pinterest is that many teachers are traveling teachers or displaced from your regular classroom at times, like during testing, for example, when your room may be used. And uh, what, what I found great about having my classroom presentation in Pinterest is that I have that available when you need it. If I have to move throughout the building, or be relocated somewhere else. And so it doesn't slow down our progression so it just continues to work. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your answers. They're really amazing. Um, does anyone else have any questions for both Leslie and Joni? Okay, well, then let me somebody take this. Any, um, Celia, somebody may other, otherwise have some insight for us that they might share that maybe we didn't cover today that would be helpful for all of us. Yes, 
Yes, I think. Um, one second. I think um, we have viewers that might have a question for you. So, Amy, if you have a question, feel free to ask Joni and Leslie. I think and wrap things up. Thank you so much again for taking the time to come to this webinar. I really appreciate it. And thank you again to Joni and Leslie. You guys were absolutely amazing and you had great insight into Pinterest. And again, if you would like to see to this presentation or we can also provide you some of the PowerPoint presentations if you would like. But this recorded presentation will be on uh, www.acteonline.org slash slash ACT Live. If any of you are looking for that, then you're welcome. It will be there probably within the next few days. And our next webinar is actually going to be May 20th, and it's going to be um, with our Army partners and um, 21st Century Career Pathways with, our, with the mil in the Army. So please that. I'd really love to have you guys there as well. And thank you so much again for joining us. And um, I really appreciate it. Everyone have a great day.